of what we have learned over the last almost three years and nearly 20 years dealing with uh, assorted inventors uh, through the disclosure project and early CSETI work, et cetera. Uh, we've really come to the conclusion, as uh, Dr. Greer mentioned at the beginning of this conversation, that uh, we are no longer uh, going to be funding individuals working in the garage with an idea that they think might work. We have found this to be a not very productive way of going ahead uh, with the development because of some of the reasons we spoke about, having a team around them and having the background and the support necessary. So we're no longer, uh, we, we did support some scientists along the way. We had some uh, minor success and some, some failures. And so, but that's behind us, and uh, we need to move on with the, our approach. So as, so as Dr. Greer, to emphasize once again, uh, we have two approaches. One is the inventor who comes to us with a device that's already functional. Uh, it's testable, as we mentioned earlier. It's self-starting, it's self-charging, it does not consume fossil fuels, produces significant power, not just a couple watts, but in the, in the house, several thousand to 10 kilowatts, several thousand watts to 10 uh, kilowatts, perhaps, in power, and uh, is a robust demonstrator, as Dr. Bearden often describes, uh, something that is solid, can run for uh, weeks on end, et cetera. And an inventor is willing to work with us allow us to test, allow us to reproduce under non-disclosure agreements to really understand the technology so we can decide how to go forward with the inventor on it. And right. second approach, that's the, that's the it exists, and somebody's come up with it, and uh, we will work with that person. The second way, the second approach that uh, we've decided is needed is to build our own facilities, our own laboratory, bring some of those scientists in and work with us, and uh, have the synergy and build the devices um, ourselves. So those are the two approaches uh, that the Orion Project is now uh, uh, going to be using uh, in, as, as we move on in the future. And hopefully uh, some of you out there in the listening audience for the World Puja uh, may know of somebody who has a device uh, and that is willing to uh, work with us. And uh, I would ask uh, people out there that know in, uh, inventors, uh, to uh, help us do some of the initial homework on it, if you will. If you know of somebody, contact them. Find out if they're actually uh, willing to uh, work with somebody to help them bring things out um, and find out a bit more about it. We have many people who say, oh, have you heard of X, Y, or Z, uh, some inventor that is already on their own track and has no interest in working with anybody. We've had that happen many, many times. We do chase after people, uh, inventors, to see what they have, but it's uh, – if you could help with that, I appreciate uh, that very much. If not, uh, let us know and uh, have inventors contact us if they are at a stage where they have something that can be tested. That's all I wanted to say on that. Yeah, and, and I also there may be people listening who know folks of, of uh, you know significant net worth uh, mm -hmm. who would want to support it financially, who who could provide the, the uh, all or part of, of the five point seven million dollar budget needed to to do this properly and have the team uh, put together. Um, you know, it's been wonderful that Drs. Uh, Bravo and, and Dr. Loader and myself and others have have not needed or <laughs> at least uh, we've been willing to do this work without any pay for our time and effort. But you cannot put together, you know, a dozen personnel and engineers where people have no income. I mean, people have families and obligations. And so, the, 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 the cold and stark reality is is that you can only bootstrap things, sweat equity things up so far, and we've reached that point. Um, thanks to the people who contributed to the Orion Project, we've gotten this far, and, we're, and we have enough funds on hand to be able to reproduce or investigate any existing device. We do not have enough funds on hand, obviously, to, to build a facility or to run a facility and outfit it with the right equipment and hire you know, a dozen or so scientists and physicists and engineers and, and uh, project management and, and get this thing going. So that's what we're searching for. And, and But there may be someone listening who knows someone who has that ability or is part of an institution or uh, a granting entity. Uh, and if they do, um, then please let us know. And actually at the website, uh, you will see that there's a place to contact if you are such a person who can provide
provide the funding or if you are an inventor. Um, of course, we don't have anyone uh, to, to answer everyone's, and I want to thank everyone for all the kind letters that they send in. We don't have a, an office or a staff, and so there's no way for us to reply to the thousands of things that come in. And also, we, we have had up until now an online donation capability. The problem with that is that it kept getting hacked into um, by mm -hmm. people who were, I don't know, I think they were in Russia or Africa, who had stolen credit cards, and they were using the Orion Project merchant account to do $5 and $10 charges to see if the cards were good. And then we were having to then uh, mop up that mess because they kept hacking in and hacking into that system. Um, we then thought we had it fixed, and they continued to do it. And what's the problem with the system is that it means that each donation that's done online has to electronically be done by hand, which would be fine if we had an office and a secretary and a staff and and IT people, but we don't. I mean, it's this, it's a handful of us who are doing everything. And so that part of the, the website, when you go there, you'll see it's been taken down. But I wanted to explain why it has been taken down. It's been taken down because... Um, we simply don't have any paid staff. We don't even have a part-time staff person to keep track of all that kind of stuff that's going on. It's a shame that the uh, Internet and the electronic world and it has become so uh, – there's this tsunami of fraud going on out there. And I don't know why they keep targeting the Orion Project site to run these fraudulent things through but it was basically shutting us down. So <clears throat> we have taken that part of the site off. You can still send a check in by snail mail, but <clears throat> again, there's no secretary at the other end to write you a nice letter back. Um, so uh, basically, you know, I just wanted to explain that we do appreciate everyone's help. Uh, it's been wonder it's wonderful, and we uh, look forward to it in the future. But we cannot do the online donation aspect anymore because we don't have anyone to monitor that on a literally if someone does a, a, a ten dollar donation which we appreciate there has to be someone on our end meaning you know dr bravo or myself or my wife or someone who literally walks that through the system manually because if we allow it to be automated it gets hacked into by these criminals uh, and this has been going on now for you know a year, over a year, and it's just we can't handle it. We don't have any. We don't have the time to handle that kind of nonsense. So um, unfortunately, uh, you know, whoever was trying to shut down the, the donation part of the website has su succeeded simply because we don't have anyone to do that. Um, uh, and so it's going to have to be, you know, the old-fashioned way. I'm afraid at this point. Um, and uh, but I do want to thank everyone who has made contributions because it's enabled us to not only get the word out about the OrionProject.org, but investigate the technologies and come up with all these uh, really amazing uh, a whole cache, of the, for lack of a better word, of intelligence files and information uh, and detailed, specific plans that can be put into this facility. Uh, once we have it uh, constructed and staffed. Uh, and, of course, we do still have, uh, if if somebody is an inventor uh, who is who is out there, they can write to the site, and, and, that, and that will actually, that person's uh, email, and there, there's a technology evaluation form, will be sent directly to our engineers, and they will be contacted by the engineers. If there's a major funder, uh, uh, someone who can uh, fund uh, the $5.7 million grant, there is a place for that for people to write there, and, and uh, I will contact them as well. Um, but the smaller donations online, unfortunately, we had to change that system and, and take it down because of the hacking that was going on, and that's just the reality of the situation. I guess if we had some way, if we had a if we had a, an office and a staff working full time or even part time, we could handle it. But we don't have those, and so we're doing the best we can uh, with what we got. And uh, so this is the, the the next best thing. But the good news is, during this past uh, several years here, we have done a lot of education of a lot of people about, which is one of the roles of uh, the Orion Project, is to educate people on the reality and the potential of these technologies. And we've also uh, gained a lot of uh, scientists who are very interested in working with us. So it's been, uh, from that point of view, it's been very successful. 
Well, yes, you know, I have to point out that we just recently in Washington uh, hosted a meeting with um, with several meetings. There was one uh, a couple of months ago with people who were uh, working with the White House on uh, philanthropy and energy issues, and we had people from the the Pew Charitable Trust. We had people from uh, a a number of walks of life come to uh, meet one of these top secret uh, scientists uh, and have us present this information, and and that's going now through the network. It's an educative process, uh, and it's an iterative process, because a lot of people have never heard that you can actually get energy from the expansion of space-time around us and, and run a generator or get water to run as a fuel in your car. This is all; These are very new paradigms, and it is educational. Uh, the other thing that happened uh, after that, and quite, quite recently, we had the, uh, head, uh, the former Minister of Defense of a G7 country uh, come and meet with uh, one of these top-secret scientists, who, uh, as well as a, a very prominent uh, business uh, family, an industrialist family, uh, whose family came, uh, also to uh, look at the proposal and, and hear about what we're doing, and now they're networking it through their system. So this is exactly what has to happen. And, of course, it takes a lot of time on, on uh, our part. Uh, I mean, Dr. Loder's been doing this with me for years, and Dr. Bravo and myself. But we think it's very important because we have to, to, to develop the coalition, as it were, and, and the cooperative coalition of people who understand uh, the science, uh, even if they're non-science people, they can understand the, the basis of it, and to get behind this huge paradigm shift that has to happen so that we don't just say that the only solution there can be is a windmill from the 1800s or something. Uh, they're, 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 the physics of this are very elegant and are actually, once you get your mind around the, the trans-dimensional science, and that is that you, when you're using these high voltage frequencies, what you really are doing is that you're tapping into this huge transdimensional field of energy that supports the fabric of space, time, matter, all of it. And that's what you're tapping into. It's not like it's coming from nowhere. It's there all the time. It's like Tesla said, there's infinite energy all around us. And it's there for the take- taking and there for learning how to tap into it. And that is a totally different paradigm from burning oil or having wind turn a windmill. It certainly is. It's a totally different mindset. And that is something. And so we're, we're, a lot of the efforts we're doing um, and continue to do as recently as a, a couple weeks ago, um, and as I'm, make, uh, as I'm doing this particular World Pugin uh, interview, I'm, I'm, I'm literally p- packing to go out to Sundance to meet with people to explain to a lot of the folks out there uh, who are concerned about the environment and concerned about energy and the future of, of the world and poverty in, in Africa and, and social justice and things of this sort, uh, exactly what it is we're doing with the Orion Project. So I'm actually en route uh, very quickly to that. So these are the sort of things that ha- that we're doing and working all the time to fulfill and it's uh i'd like to just thank everyone who has supported our work and uh, to keep uh looking for us out there sort of be our scouts those of you on the world Pusia network who are listening to be the scouts for folks who can uh be uh funding sources for this facility and research uh uh, lab that we want to put together, and also for potential inventors that are out there, because people come across this uh, a bit, a phenomenon all the time. I mean, I'm not a, a physicist or an electrical engineer, but there are people who stumble across this all the time. I like telling the story of how Stan Meyer stumbled across his water to fuel system. He was actually working at a, uh, a radar plant, uh, in a, uh, and he observed that at certain uh, high voltage and at certain frequencies, water just completely became a ga- gaseous material very quickly and easily, a very, very low power. And it had to do with the high voltage and the, and the resonant and pulse frequency. So that empirical observation led him and his, his twin brother to begin to experiment and to develop what they did. And so these sort of things have been happening for 100 years. The, the,